We are happy to welcome all of you to celebrate pop culture in Ghent. For this year's Q&A, things are going to be slightly different. As you may know, SAG AFTRA, the union that represents many of our guests, is currently on strike against the major studios, networks, and streamers. The union has put together a set of guidelines to allow our guests to still participate at our event during the strike and to come and meet all of you here in Belgium. These guidelines require our guests to stay away from discussing specific shows or characters by name and to avoid comments that might be seen as promoting projects that fall under the union's strike order. Therefore, actors appearing at our show will be happy to discuss other, more general topics about their lives and work. In order to be able to proceed with our Q&As, we kindly ask you to avoid asking questions concerning the actors' projects and characters. The team at FACTS really supports the actors' current efforts to secure a fair deal. But equally, we understand that this may be frustrating as many of you are eager to show your love for their work. So, here's how it will happen today. In the first part of our journey, our moderator will ask you all questions. Afterwards, you will also have the opportunity to ask questions, as long as you respect the strike rules. And even if you cannot ask character-related questions, just feel free to express your love and enthusiasm for our guests. The entire FACTS team wishes you lots of fun at the show. Adventuring in the forest, eager to explore. And now the winding fairy path shall guide you to my door. This magic monster traveling through the caves of the just drinking cans of beer. So that was great. <laughs> um, when I was in the UK back in the day, there was a famous drinking game, and I was named three famous Belgians. Can you name three famous Belgians? Uh, yeah, I mean, Jean-Paul Van Damme. Uh, I, I thought that would get a bigger one. Do you see me? Come on. Um, yes, I mean, I'm a big football fan, so I know lots of Belgians. I'd say, like, I'm a sports fan as well, so behind Celtic. So I'd say uh, Toby Anna Bebild, Jan Vertonghen, and uh, the guy who can't seem to make it at Chelsea, I don't know why he can't make it work there or why they can't work with him, but Romelu Lukaku is amazing. Yeah. And how about three famous Scotsmen? Three famous Scotsmen? Well, there's quite a lot of actors that I could mention. Um, I don't know, John Logie Baird, Graham Alexander Bell. Um, and Robbie Burns. Wow. Now, you're an actor. Yeah. What would be like the perk of being an actor? The perk of being an actor? Uh, I don't know, you get to spend, uh, you know, if you're a successful actor and you're able to work a lot, you get this lovely thing where you work and work and work, but then when you don't work, you're just off. And that's a kind of rhythm that not a lot of people get. A lot of people work 50 weeks a year, 9 till 5. I, when I work, I work 6 a.m. till like 8 p.m. But when I don't work, I'm just off. So I get to be with my kids, and I get to be with my friends, and I get to be with my partner, and that's kind of a perk. What's the most unexpected thing about acting? 
the most unexpected thing about acting. I don't know if you guys know this, because it always seems really glamorous when we're up here or when we're on red carpets, but it's probably one of the least glamorous jobs I think you can do. It is, you're generally freezing, pretending to be hot, or you're generally <laughs> hot, like too hot, pretending to be freezing. Um, you're always covered in water, you're always covered in blood, so it's never that glamorous. I think people think it's really glamorous, but um, really it's just when we come to sell the movies and things that it gets glamorous. And what would be the most difficult emotion to express as an actor? Crying, laughing, something else? Uh, I don't really find anything difficult. I think uh, if the script is really good, it comes naturally. If the script is really bad and it's asking you to cry, it's really hard to cry. If the script is really bad and it's asking you to laugh, it's really hard to laugh. So as long as the script is good, I feel like it comes naturally because the story just wants to pour out of you, you know? And if you wouldn't have been an actor, what would you have liked to become? If I wasn't an actor, I think... Well, look, I was going to join the Navy, so if I hadn't got into acting school, I would probably have done that. So maybe that, but um, I was... I would like to be a park ranger, like uh, in a big national outdoor park, working in the outdoors. I know some people are foolish enough to want to become an actor. Do you have any tips on anybody for anybody in the audience who wants to become an actor? I feel like a lot of people I talk to these days say I want to be an actor and I go, okay, so what are you doing about that? And they're like, I don't know, I just want to get an agent. And I'm like, nah, come on. You've either got to go to acting school or you've got to just do acting. Like whatever age you are, 8, 16, 20, 30, 40. The minute you decide you want to become an actor, start acting. So what does that mean? Go to an amateur dramatic club, go to acting school, go to youth theatre. Make sure you are in front of people performing and failing. Because it's through failing and being kind of not appreciated that you start to lose your ego in a bad way and you start to be able to just be yourself on stage without worrying about anything else. And I would say this actually, being on stage, even if it's just amateur or youth theatre or anything like that, it's really, really healthy for you. Even if you don't want to become an actor, it's really healthy for your self-esteem and for your ego and for your own ability to withstand criticism because you get really good at really not giving a shit what people think of you because if you, you can't control it. I can't control whether you like me as an actor. I can't control whether you like my performance. The only thing I can control is what I'm trying to give you. And that means that there's a certain power in that. Um, so even if you don't want to be an actor, I would always suggest doing some form of acting and some form of performance. I think it helps you sleep better at night. Now, I can imagine being on set can be exciting, but also exhausting. Do you have, have any rituals or habits that help you wind down? Alcohol, copious amounts of alcohol. Um, I actually, yeah, no. Um, no, I don't really. I just, I find it quite easy to go home and switch off uh, and go to bed. I used to eat a sandwich every night after getting home from doing a play. Uh, a really big fat cheese and ham sandwich with onion in it. And then I realized my voice, I was losing my voice, and then I realized that eating a sandwich late at night and then lying down was making me lose my voice because of the stomach acid. So there you go, that's real interesting. <laughs> Stop that ritual. Now you've been active for over 20 years? Yeah, I've been acting for 20, what is my 44? I've been acting for 28 years. Wow. What has changed most in those 28 years in the acting industry? Uh, oh yeah. What has changed the most? Uh, I don't know, man. I've changed a lot. Uh, I'm older and wiser and hopefully better. I don't know what's changed as much, mate, to be honest with you. I think the scripts that I get are less finished. It used to be I'd get a script and it felt like we could shoot that script. These days, I get scripts and or I get the first script of a TV show and the rest haven't been written yet. And they'll get written while we're making the show. That's never, it never used to be like that for me. Uh, and I feel like with movie scripts, there's less money for development. So I get a script that's maybe the third draft, whereas I used to get a script when it was the seventh draft. 
and that, that means that you're kind of going into things that feel sometimes a little less well prepared, you know? So that's maybe the only thing I can pinpoint. Do you prefer CGI or real life special effects? I mean, real life special effects are always preferable, but sometimes they're just not doable. But I don't mind working with CGI, and I don't mind working with green screen. I think, again, like I said, if you've got a good script, green screen is great. If you've got a bad script, and you're working with real people, it's really hard. But if you're working with a good script and you're just playing against tennis balls, I think I'm happy, you know? Now, we can all assume you're famous. So fame, do you love it or hate it? <laughs> I don't love it or hate it. It has never been something awful for me to deal with. It's never, it's never affected my life in the way that it does affect some people who are at the, like, in the top 5%. So I'm kind of lucky, and it, you know, there are benefits to it at times, but generally, no, I don't love it or hate it, it's, it's, it is what it is, and it's served me at times, and it's, um, uh, and it's hurt me at times, but it's, it's fine, it's just part of the job. And just between us, have you ever used your fame to obtain something, like a table at a fully booked restaurant? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I generally walk around with a hat and a pair of glasses, but sometimes if you're walking up to a restaurant and you're thinking, I wonder if we'll be able to get a table and it's all fully booked and it's all that, I take the hat off, take the glasses off, like, hi, <laughs> hi, how you doing? And, uh, and the people you're with will be like, you ask, you ask. And it doesn't always work, but sometimes it does. What's your strangest story related to being famous? Oh my god. Uh, I met a couple at a party once who uh, the, the woman decided to tell me that I was her uh, allowance. Yeah. Um, I, you know the list where it's like you have a list of five people or something like that, and yeah. if your partner meets one of them, they're allowed to do something with them and vice versa. So I was at the top of her list. And, um, and so they obviously never, they never thought they would ever meet me, but they've got this list. And, uh, and the guy's like going, what the hell? And the girl's like, she's, she was like, she was on. She was like, she was like for real. And uh, she went away to the bathroom and the guy was like, dude, I love her, man. I really love her. I don't, and I was like, mate, I'm not, I am not doing this. I was married at the time. I'm married now, but I was married at the time. And I was like, I am not going anywhere near your partner and all that kind of stuff. But it was kind of weird. Um, and then she, she made the point of telling me that most people would actually pick for the top of their list somebody like Channing Tatum. But she was like, but not me. <laughs> I know, right? I was like, all right, cool, thanks. All right, final question before we go to the audience. You're a dad. How has fatherhood changed your life? Uh, I mean, I think it gives you perspective. Uh, you realize that what you want and what you do really isn't the most important thing in your life anymore. It's just they're the most important thing, whether you like that or not at times. And, um, and they really are your first and last consideration, definitely, 100%. So, so you become the least important person in your life. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's your time to shine. We're going to open the uh, audience questions, so don't be shy. James usually doesn't bite, so please line up. And a few basic rules, English only, one question per person. Please articulate and speak in the microphone. And please, respect the rules we explained at the beginning. So no questions about series, movies, names, just general questions. First on the left, go ahead. Hi James, I'm Kate and I desperately need your help. Okay. So here's the thing, I'm a big fan of you for since like uh, Mr. Thomas, but uh, one performance has really struck to me very much and that was the air traffic control sketch on ESNL because I relate very, very much. Uh, I work in customer care and I often have uh, lovely Scottish people on the phone who I really would like to help, but who I, um, well, don't really understand much. So, I, here's where I need your help. How do I say in Scottish, please talk proper English so I can help you? <laughs> right, okay, here we go. Um, First of all, I would say, never say that to a Scottish person. Yeah, how do I say it nicely, you know, like, 
and you'd say, I'm really, so you'd take responsibility for not being able to understand that person. Okay. Instead, of, <laughs> instead of blaming them, I'd say, um, I'm not used to hearing your accent. It's very exotic to my ear. Um, would, you, would you help me by speaking more slowly? I'm so sorry if that's in any way offensive. <laughs> I feel we might get your issue solved quicker if you talk slow. Hi James. Oh, it's hey. weird. <laughs> uh, I'm Salma and I like your acting. Uh, I, I always liked it, but today I grow to like you as a person, as a human being, because I've been so, to so many conventions and usually actors do not take the time to say hi, thank you, nice meeting you, that, that was so, that was so nice and it's just a thank you from me. Listen, thank you, I feel like there's, you guys come and you spend your money and you spend your time and before today you've spent money and time watching our movies and things and TV shows and whatever, it feels really important to me to try and give a bit of energy back so in those moments even though I'm just saying the same things and stuff I am literally trying to give some energy because it's like I feel like aside from the fact that I make money coming to these things which I do I I just think it's a really unique opportunity to meet the people that have helped you get where you've gotten to because uh, other than red carpets for the film and TV business you just don't meet the people who appreciate your work and who've supported your work, like you said, for 28 years. So, genuinely, thank you. Thank you. Hey, um, how was it working with uh, Andrew Adamson on a movie with a uh, lion, a witch and a wardrobe? Oh man, I am so sorry, but that's a question I can't answer right now. I'm currently on strike and I'm not allowed to talk about any of my work. So, no I'm so problem. sorry, dude. I'm so sorry. Come closer to the mic. Um, I'm a huge movie and I'm a huge fan of your movie together. I just wanted to say that because most Thank people. Uh, and my question would be: as an actor, you always have to learn new stuff, like riding horses and everything. What's the one thing that you would say was the most difficult or most entertaining, or maybe you even hurt yourself? Uh, I had to do. A, I can talk about this because it's a play in the West End. Uh, I did a play called The Ruling Class. Uh, in which I had to learn to unicycle whilst wearing nothing but my underwear and a pair of high heel boots whilst playing the flute. Uh, and that was, that was really, really difficult. Uh, and of course, I learned to unicycle. And then as soon as the play finished, I never got on a unicycle again. I don't think I could ride a unicycle today. I'm really ready. Would you rather fight five duck-sized armored bears or one armored bear-sized duck? Oh, five duck-sized armored bears. I think uh, uh, a giant duck. I think I'd, I'd yeah, I think it's not a chance against an armored duck because I got a lot of pluck. Thank you. I'm looking at a moderator. Can I? He already knows what question I'm going to ask. Um, my question for you is one that I've asked other actors at a convention. And if you were in my position, what question would you ask yourself? Oh my god. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, if I was you, what yes. question would I ask For me? instance, is there something that you really want to tell and that nobody's asked you about? Or is it like, you know, I really, yeah, I don't know. Or a special question, or a weird question you want to be asked? Um, I'm sorry. I would ask myself, why is it when somebody asks me a question like this? Or when somebody says, any funny stories? Or when somebody says, do you know any jokes? I go completely blank. Yeah, and because yeah, you're under pressure. Well, but yeah, I can yeah. remember my lines and stand on stage and unicycle and play the flute and, you know. 
Yeah. Or when you do like weird, amazing things on call, but like when somebody says, "Hey, what do you think about this?" or like, "What's the funny story?" or "What's the funny question?" I'm blank. I'm so sorry. I'd ask myself that. <laughs> um, hey, how you doing? James, Hi. James. Ray McTavish, when he asked, when he was asked that question, said, "What would my 12-year-old think of what I've become?" So what would your your twelve year old think of what you become? What anybody thinks of me is not my business. That is their business and I don't need to know. I do not want to know what my family thinks of me. I'm just happy that we're getting by. Hi James. Um, it was really nice to meet you just then. Um, my question is, what is the most inspiring book that you've ever read about acting? Oh wow, um, huh, about acting? Yeah, or just helped you with acting yeah, yeah. in general? Do you know what, I, I have to be honest, I have not had a good time reading books about acting, I don't know why, I've never really felt like somebody can teach me how to act. I know that sounds bad. People have definitely helped me learn how to act. But as soon as somebody starts trying to teach me the, the one way to do it, or how to hold a microphone, um, as soon as somebody starts trying to tell me how to act, it's just, it works for them, but it doesn't necessarily work for me. I don't think, and it's the same with directors, as soon as they're trying to tell you how to act, I don't think it works. But then, helping you figure out how to act, I think works. For me, it was watching acting, watching other actors, watching movies, watching theater, that has really sort of informed my acting, and then also doing it myself. Um, and my belief that acting isn't just about feeling emotions and being truthful or realistic or believable, acting is about storytelling. And the minute I figured that out, everything became much easier. Because who knows whether you're being truthful? Who knows whether you're being realistic? That's, I might think I'm being realistic and you think it's bullshit. But I can say I did tell the story. And as soon as I started trying to just tell a story, everything started to fall into place. But in terms of books, I've never really enjoyed books on acting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello James, I'm a big fan of you, but I'm also a big fan of reading. Do you have a favorite book in general about any topic? Yeah, uh, my favorite books, um, you know, pretty classic standard, To Kill a Mockingbird, uh, Cormac McCarthy's The Road. I do have to say, I'm mentioning a book here, not necessarily a movie, a book called Atonement, um, which I think is one of the most incredible books I've ever read. Um, there's an amazing book called Bird Song by Sebastian Fox, which is incredible. And uh, I'd say those are those are some of my favorites, some, and they're definitely my top ten. Hi. Um, first of all, thank you for coming to Belgium, and it's really nice to meet you. And I was wondering if you could pull off any heist without any consequences, what would you steal? Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of money. Um, <laughs> definitely lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of money. Uh, I did used to think as a kid, I, I, did, I thought I'd like to be a pilot, I'd like to be a doctor, and no, I did want to be a bank robber. Because um, I thought being a, not a violent one, if you were able to do it all by like tunneling and like safe breaking, I thought, well, that's a really cool way to make lots of money. You don't hurt anybody. And if, in my head, the bank was insured, so you wouldn't be stealing the money from people. You were just stealing it from a corporation that was insured. So I was like, yeah, I'll be a bank robber. Didn't quite realize that it was illegal and you could go to prison for 30 years. But, so that's weird. I did actually consider being a bank robber for a large part of my... I'd say from the age of 7 to 12. So if your acting doesn't work out anymore, we will know where to find you. Yeah, probably in prison. <laughs> Thank you. Hi James. Uh, first of all, I really want to thank you for your performance in Cyrano. It was an exceptional theatrical experience and one that I will cherish for the rest of my life. Thank really. you. 
my, my question is concerning yeah. the theatre. Do you have any more dream roles you want to play? Maybe some Shakespeare? Yeah, I wanted to play, uh, I wanted to be in Julius Caesar. In fact, before we did Sailing of the Bergerac, I was going to do Julius Caesar. Um, and I, we have an idea of how we want to do it, Jamie and I. Jamie, the director that I work with a lot. Um, but uh, around four or five different productions of Julius Caesar were all going to happen in the theater at that exact moment. And so we decided to pivot and do something else. And Jamie came to me and he said, do you want to do Sailing of the Bergerac? And I was like, yeah, man. So, uh, maybe we'll do that one day, um, and, uh, yeah, Shakespeare, I like some Shakespeare, I don't like it all, but, uh, yeah, there's some great roles out there, so I'm hopefully going to get them. I do want to play King Lear, but that's when I'm really, really old. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, James. Uh, now that you're in Belgium, I just wonder if you, uh, which place or which city is your favorite? So far? Yeah, so far. I'm not just saying this because we're in Ghent, but so far I've really enjoyed Ghent. <laughs> I had one of the best meals I've ever had last night in Ghent. And, um, uh, and it's really beautiful so far, everything I've seen. So the other places that I've been in Belgium, where have I been? I've been to Oostend and I've been to Blankenberg. I was in Blankenberg when I was 12 and I was in Oostend making a movie and I really saw nothing of it. But this one I feel like I've got a little bit of a flavor for. It. And I'm not just saying it because we're here. <laughs> Thank you. What is one quote that always stuck with you? One quote that always stuck with me? Oh, man. Uh, something my grandmother says, which is, uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with, nothing wrong where we greet, which means there's nothing wrong with a little cry. Um, and she always told me it was okay to cry. Thank you. Hello again. Um, first of all, I want to say that you're my favorite actor because uh, you have a quite big range of roles you played in the past. And I'm looking forward to what's coming next. And uh, the other thing is, uh, we are all here to meet our heroes or idols and stuff. So do you have an idol or an idol in the past when you were younger? As in acting or...? What, what else you like? Wow. Um, I mean... Yeah. Uh, they were all footballing idols, really. <laughs> That's okay. There's a Swedish player called Henrik Larsson who was, I don't know why I slightly did a Swedish accent there, please forgive that. Um, it's probably bad as well. But Henrik Larsson was massive for me. And then Neil Lennon who was a Northern Irish uh, player who later became uh, a really successful manager for Celtic as well. Those two players, I, they were so big for me growing up. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Hi James. Uh, if you could swap lives for like a week or something with another celebrity, who would you choose? Doesn't have to be an actor. With another celebrity? If I could swap lives yeah. with another celebrity? Oh man! Uh, I think it would probably be with like a singer or a musician who gets to play big stadium rock concerts. Do you know what? Taylor Swift has got amazing guests. And I've, and I've been at one of them. Back in like 2015 or something like that, when she was doing it, was it the 1984 album? And um, and that was an incredible gig, but the atmosphere in that crowd was electric. So maybe I swap careers or lives or bodies with Taylor Swift. Alright, thank you. Okay. Hello, James. I'm a big film collector. I watch a lot of films, and I want to say you're the lead in one of my top favorite films of all time, which will always be dear to my heart, and it's Starter for Ten. At the same time, I also really like the 2001 slasher film you're in called Swimming Pool. Yeah, I thought it. Yeah. And my question is, if you, if you feel like answering it, looking back at all the films you've done, are there any in there that you say, uh, today still, I'm so proud of that, I'm happy, I'm happy I was part of that, and are there ones you, you are like, no, I don't want to talk about that? The answer to your question is yes, 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 but uh, I can't talk about any of those films, I'm afraid, I'm so sorry. It's not that I don't fancy talking about them, I just, um, uh, it's, um, 
We're on strike, and I support the strike, and I don't want to talk about the films that I'm in right now. Sorry about that. I respect that. Thank you, Thank you, Mia. Thank you, Mia. Thank you, Mia. My name is Tasneem. I've always been a big fan, starting off from seeing you as Mr. Thomas, you as Professor X. But yeah, you've been a great actor, and we all know that. But if not for acting, would there be something else that you want to be a part of in the world of movies? Oh, uh, yeah, I'd love to work with a camera, and um, I think being part of a camera crew would be awesome. That's always a good thing. Hopefully. But all the best, James. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. James, two final questions. We have to wrap up after that, so go ahead. Hi, James. Hey. Thanks to come. Uh, just one funny question about split mode. Uh, about split? Yes. I can't talk about split, I'm afraid. Sorry. No. I'm so sorry, I'm not allowed. I'm sorry, okay. mate. I'm really sorry. Do you like art? Do I like art? Yes. Yeah. It's okay for you. Thank you very much. It looks amazing. <laughs> I'll, you know what? I'll get it afterwards, okay? Thank you, mate. I really appreciate it. Can you give this gentleman a round of applause because I never gave him an answer. Okay. Last but one question. By the way, you look amazing. This? Do you want to come? Do you want to come up here? Do you want to come and show people what you look like? Because you look incredible. It's a really good cosplay. You don't want to come up? You shy? I don't know how you get up here. Come over here. Come over here. What's your name? Is he in here? Zaza? Zaza? Well, it's nice to meet you. Guys, this is Zaza and she looks amazing. <laughs> You've done such a good job, bro. Right, go. You better ask a question. <laughs> what is my favorite movie of all time? Oh my god, it's not even my work, and I don't know if I can answer it. Shall I whisper it to you? Yes. So I, I'll whisper it to you so it's not public. Thank you very much for your questions and thank you for putting hand back. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have time for. Please give it up for James! Thank you very much guys. Thank you.